Welcome! This is the third video in the Doomsday series. In these videos, I look at the possibility of Earth's civilization being destroyed by various outside forces. In the first video, I looked at the possibility of us being hit by a supernova. In the second one, I looked at the possibility of a superwave hitting us. And in this third video, I'm going to look at the fact that the Earth's magnetic field is decaying and what impact that might have upon us. I'm sure that some of you have seen the results from the new ESA mission called SWARM. It's a series of satellites that are designed to measure very accurately the Earth's magnetic field. The following video shows changes in the Earth's magnetic field. Red indicates an increase of uh, the field by about 60 nanoteslers, whereas blue indicates a decrease of the Earth's magnetic field by about 60 nanoteslers. Just for reference, the overall Earth's magnetic field varies between 25,000 and 65,000 nanotesla, depending on where you are on the surface of the planet. So these measurements represent about a 0.1% variation in the Earth's magnetic field. As you can see, there are areas that have both increased their magnetic field and other areas that have decreased their magnetic field in the six month period of these observations. However, these relative modest changes over a relatively short period have not stopped people from speculating that all sorts of disasters are going to happen when we lose our magnetic field. At the same time that the Earth's magnetic field has been weakening, the magnetic pole of the Earth has been moving. The Northern Pole has moved from Northern Canada towards the North Pole, and the Southern Pole has made a similar excursion. Are these two factors linked? Is the decay of the Earth's magnetic field somehow linked to the change in the position of the magnetic poles? Is this an indication that the Earth's magnetic field is about to flip? However, I would like to point out, if the Earth's magnetic field is about to flip, then the northern magnetic pole is going in the wrong direction. It's heading north rather than south. As in all scientific problems, the first thing you do is ask yourself some questions. If we want to know what's going on here, we need to understand why the Earth has a magnetic field at all. And what does it shield us against? Are we actually losing it? Is it decaying away significantly? Or is it just about to flip? And then finally we need to understand the consequences. What happens if it does? First we must get one thing clear that is often confused by those wanting to call this a disaster scenario. The Earth's magnetic axis is not the same as its spin axis. If the spin axis reversed, we'd all be in a lot of trouble. However, that is basically impossible. Well, except that if something very big hit us, say another planet. Under those circumstances, a reversal of the spin axis would be about the last thing we'd have to worry about. The spin axis of the Earth has never flipped in geological history. However, there is a theory of how the Moon formed which involved us being hit by a large planet. This is one of many theories and none of them have been confirmed. The scenario goes something like this. A massive body moving very fast hits the Earth a glancing blow. This creates a large amount of debris and also changes the spin rate of the Earth and the tilt of its spin axis. That debris eventually coagulates into our Moon over a period of time. This all was supposed to have happened about four and a half billion years ago. So why does the Earth have a magnetic field? The answer lies below our feet in the internal structure of the Earth. We know there are four main layers in the Earth's interior. There is the inner core, the outer core, the mantle and the crust. Each one of these has their own characteristics. The inner core is made of solid iron. The outer core is liquid iron and nickel. The mantle is made of silica and metal oxides and has a sort of plastic consistency, i.e. it flows very slowly. And then there's the outer crust, the bit that we live on, that is basically solid and is mostly made up of silica and aluminium oxide. Some might find it strange that the hot inner core is solid, whereas the cooler outer core is liquid. You would have thought that the inner core would be more molten than the outer area. And the answer lies in the fact that the melting point of iron goes up considerably as the pressure increases. So the pressure in the inner core makes the uh, iron there solidify at a much higher temperature. But how do we know all of this? 
Well, the tool we use is earthquakes. When an earthquake occurs, it sends waves through the body of the planet. By measuring the timing of these waves at different locations around the Earth, we can build up a three-dimensional picture of the internal structure of the Earth. It's sort of like building up a sonogram of the planet. But the internal structure of the Earth by itself does not make a dynamo to create magnetic field. You need other factors. The first factor is you need a large volume of a fluid conductor, and the outer core made of liquid iron supplies that. You also need a source of energy to circulate the fluid, and in the internal structure of the Earth we have convection, and you need the Earth to be rotating relatively rapidly in order to organize the flows to create a directional field. It all sounds a bit complicated, doesn't it? So can we prove that this actually works? Well, somebody's actually built a model of the Earth's core in the lab. At the center of this strange looking apparatus, there is a solid iron core that is rotating very fast. It is surrounded by molten sodium, and lo and behold, it produces a magnetic field, just like the theoretical models predict. The Earth's magnetic field might seem huge, but really, on a cosmic scale, it isn't. At the surface, it's only about 0.4 Gauss, or about 40,000 nanotesla. And its distribution is not uniform across the globe. As you can see from the picture in the top right, it's weakest over South America and strongest near the poles. If there was no solar wind, the Earth's magnetic field would look symmetric, as shown in the bottom right-hand picture. However, the magnetosphere is the shape of a teardrop. This is because the solar wind compresses it on the sunward side and stretches it out on the anti-sun side. Well, if the magnetosphere is our shield, what does it shield us against? Basically, it's any form of charged particles. But that means it does not shield us against radiation, i.e. light. It does not shield us against neutral particles such as neutrinos, neutrons, atoms or molecules. Nor does it prevent collisions with dust, rocks, asteroids or comets. So really, it's not much of a shield. The next most obvious question is how does it shield us? Well, this is a quirk of nature in that charged particles cannot cross magnetic fields. Under some circumstances, they can cross magnetic fields. One, if they diffuse slowly across magnetic fields, or if they have a lot of energy, such as cosmic rays. You can actually see cosmic rays, but you have to go down into a cave to do it. On many of these cave tours, they'll stop you and turn out the lights for a while. After a couple of minutes, you'll start seeing little bright flashes in your eyes. Even with a magnetic shield and thousands of tons of rock above our heads, cosmic rays are still getting through. The reason why you're seeing flashes is the cosmic rays are passing through your eyeball, leaving an ionization trail in the fluid there, and you're seeing those as flashes as the ionization recombines. These happen all the time, but usually they're too faint to be seen under normal daylight conditions. The solar wind is made up almost entirely of charged particles, so it has to flow round our magnetosphere. There are two exceptions to this. Some of the solar plasma can leak in through the cusp regions near the magnetic poles, and the other is when the magnetic field of the Earth is disrupted during a geomagnetic storm. Another consequence if we had no magnetic field is that the solar wind would slowly sweep away our atmosphere. An example of this that is often used is Mars, which does not have a strong magnetic field and has very little atmosphere. However, it's a relatively poor example because Mars has very much less gravity than we do, so it's unable to hold on to its atmospheric gases so easily. The Earth's atmosphere is much more extensive, and as it tries to move out, it gets ionized by short wavelength radiation from the Sun, mainly X-rays and ultraviolet light, and so becomes charged, and cannot cross our magnetic field, so remains trapped. The only place that solar particles can leak in is through the cusps, at the moment, that's the only place that any of our atmosphere can leak out. And we're losing between 0.4 and 4 million tons of our atmosphere every year, mainly hydrogen and helium. However, it would take 1.2 billion years for us to lose our atmosphere entirely. Of course, that assumes that we have no sources to replenish it, which in fact we do. The next question we have is, is the Earth's magnetic field weakening significantly? Well, if we look at this plot, which is a measure of the Earth's magnetic field strength, we see that it has weakened 20% in the last 400 years. But we can't just leave it at that. We have to ask whether this change is unusual and will the trend likely continue? To answer that question, we need to look at a longer time scale. 
And here is the Earth's magnetic field over the last 80,000 years. The red arrow indicates the current level of the magnetic field. And you can see that over that time frame, this current level is actually quite high compared with the average. You'll also note there are a lot of ups and downs in this plot. So a short-term change like we're seeing doesn't necessarily mean it will continue down to zero or even reverse. If we look on yet a longer scale, we can see that the current level of the Earth's magnetic field is actually quite strong compared with the average. This graph stretches all the way back to the last reversal of the Earth's magnetic field. But what happens when the Earth's magnetic field does reverse? Well, this is a model of what will likely happen. We start with the current configuration of the field with north at the top and south at the bottom. And as it reversed, it would fragment and weaken. So we'd have several north and several south poles on the Earth at the same time. Over time, it would eventually reorganize again, now with south at the top and north at the bottom. That middle frame has often made me wonder if the fragmented and weak magnetic field on Mars means that Mars doesn't just have a weak magnetic field, but might be undergoing such a reversal at the current time. So what would be the effect of this? Well, most of us wouldn't notice that it's happening. Some parts of the world that don't get aurora usually would now get aurora, but otherwise nobody would notice at all. Well, that's not quite true. One group of people would, and that would be the compass manufacturers. So all this hype about the Earth's magnetic field disappearing and the magnetic poles about to flip is just nonsense. Even though the Earth's magnetic field has dropped by about 20% in the last 400 years, it still leaves it as one of the highest levels we've seen in the last 800,000 years. In the unlikely event that the Earth's magnetic field is about to reverse, then the field will not go to zero. It will merely weaken and fragment for a few thousand years and then re-establish itself in the opposite orientation. It will probably have zero effect on our lives. But what we're most likely seeing is just normal fluctuations in the Earth's magnetic field. So if you see somebody on the web talking about how disastrous it's going to be if the Earth's magnetic field flips or the magnetosphere continues to weaken, please just post a link to this video and show them up to be the charlatans that they are. For with just a few clicks of the mouse, they could have found exactly the same data as that I have shown you here. So they're doing this deliberately just to fool people for their own amusement or financial gain, and I find that abhorrent.